Darth Vader redeemed himself at the end of Return of the Jedi before drawing his last breath. In Avengers Endgame, Iron Man made the ultimate sacrifice to save the universe. These characters had an epic death not just for the sake of entertainment, but to preserve their legacy. Unfortunately, not all beloved characters kit the bucket in a dignified manner. So I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 iconic movie characters who suffered insulting deaths. Number 10. Admiral Akbar, The Last Jedi when Disney's Star Wars trilogy was announced, the sci-fi community could not contain its joy. Not only would we experience brand new stories in a galaxy far, far away, we'd see familiar faces like Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Princess Leia. But Star Wars buffs were just as pumped to see more obscure characters, including Admiral Akbar. Since he oversaw the destruction of the second Death Star, Akbar had been a fan favorite, and even casual viewers knew him for his classic line, It's a trap! Although the lobster-like rebel had to settle for a glorious cameo in The Force Awakens, it was hoped that Akbar would have a beefier role in The Last Jedi. Instead, he was inelegantly snuffed out within the first 30 minutes. Despite dying in the line of fire against an enemy he dedicated his life to destroy, nobody seems to acknowledge Akbar's death. Instead, the scene focuses more on Princess Leia even though she survived the attack. Worse still, Akbar's name is barely mentioned again for the rest of the movie. How rude indeed. Number 9. David Dunn, Glass when Unbreakable concluded, we naturally assumed that David Dunn's story had drawn to a close. So when he popped up in Split's post credit scene after a 17-year hiatus, viewers were blown away. And when director M. Night Shyamalan announced that David Dunn and The Horde would face off in a crossover called Glass, fans were beside themselves with excitement. Although nobody was surprised David died in the climax, how he met his end was, let's say, unexpected. Rather than going out swinging, David drowns after a thug stuffs his head in a flooded pothole. Now it's obvious this moment is meant to subvert expectations. Instead of dying in an epic battle, the unbreakable hero is killed because of an easily exploitable weakness. In a way, this idea idea works, since it ties into the mythos that indestructible characters like Achilles or Superman tend to have a simple vulnerability. But nobody can pretend they weren't a little heartbroken to see David perish in such a pitiful manner. After all the deadly encounters this guy survived, he was ultimately bested by a freaking puddle. Number 8. Sally Hardesty, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 after seeing the success of 2018's Halloween, we knew other horror properties would crawl out of the woodwork to try and forge their own legacy sequel. And because the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is among the most iconic slashers, it was no surprise when a direct follow-up to the original was greenlit. This entry centers around a group of Gen Z entrepreneurs buying property in a town in Texas. By chance, they cross paths with Leatherface, causing the chainsaw-wielding cannibal to go on another killing spree. What are they like, eh? Even though there hasn't been a good Texas Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel since, well, ever, diehard fans were curious to check out this installment, since it would see the return of Sally Hardesty, the final girl from the original film. Even though Sally wasn't played by the same actress, Marilyn Burns passed away in 2014, it was still a nice way to tie the first movie with this legacy sequel. At least it would have been nice if the character was done justice. Rather than letting Sally settle her score with the maniac who left her traumatized for decades, she dies less than a minute after confronting Leatherface. No badass one-liners, no sensational showdown. All we got was a cheap death and a lot of stuff, fans. Number 7. Bill. Kill Bill Volume 2. Kill Bill Volume 1 opens with the titular villain ordering his assassination squad to gun down his pregnant lover Beatrix Kiddo. He then shoots her in the head, which leaves her in a four-year coma. The second Beatrix awakens, she sets on having her vengeance against Bill and his assassination squad. Even though we don't see Bill's face in Volume 1, we are desperate to see him pay for his crimes. So when Beatrix finally confronts her ex in Volume 2, we think we're about to bear witness to a battle of momentous proportions. After all, Volume 1 concludes with a mesmerizing 20-minute sword fight, so we expect Bill to put up an even bigger fight. But sadly, this just wasn't the case. Although the sequel was supposed to end with Bill having an epic duel on a moonlit beach with Beatrix, this idea was scrapped to cut down costs. Instead, all we got after four hours of waiting is a 17-second battle. Even though the pair's final exchange is sweetly poetic, it's hard not to feel betrayed by such an abrupt showdown. Number 6. Mystique Dark Phoenix 
On paper, Jean Grey killing off Mystique in Dark Phoenix makes sense. Having the X-Men watch Jean murder their teammates solidifies her descent into evil and creates an irreversible rift in the team. Plus, the fact that Mystique was among the most popular characters in the franchise should have made this moment more heart-wrenching. And since Jennifer Lawrence was a megastar at the time, having her character killed off within the first half hour made for a shocking move. However, Mystique's death doesn't work for several reasons. Firstly, the trailers all but confirmed that Mystique was gonna die, robbing this scene of any, well, Mystique. Secondly, even though Charles Xavier watches his stepsister of 40 years die before him, he barely reacts. Thirdly, this scene is set up like Mystique and Jean Grey are best friends, despite the fact they barely interacted with each other during the franchise. Finally, Jennifer Lawrence just doesn't act like, well, she doesn't really act in this, to be honest. Although the two-time Oscar winner was phenomenal in the other X-Men installments, she often comes across like she doesn't want to be in Dark Phoenix altogether. And considering how nightmarish the film's production was, you can totally understand why. Number 5. Bane The Dark Knight Rises Unlike the Riddler, Penguin, the Joker, or the rest of Batman's rogues gallery, Bane is a born fighter. Due to his insurmountable strength, he's among the few who can physically hold his own against the Dark Knight. So when Christopher Nolan announced that Tom Hardy would portray the masked maniac in The Dark Knight Rises, fans were hyped. Even though Bane's voice was criticized, Hardy successfully portrayed the master terrorist as a truly terrifying force. The way Bane pummels Gotham's protector with such effortless brutality is genuinely quite scary. He may not be the most iconic Batman villain, but no one has beaten the world's greatest detective as viciously as Bane. So when Batman readies for his rematch with the lethal luchador in the movie's third act, we're expecting a battle for the ages. Instead, Bane is anticlimactically shot dead by Catwoman before she churns out a cheesy one-liner. This sequence is filmed so poorly it's hard to tell what happened or if Bane is actually dead. It's also hard to believe that someone as imaginative as Christopher Nolan couldn't think of a better way to kill off an iconic supervillain. Very odd in Indeed. Number 4. Freddy Krueger, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare it's astounding that Freddy Krueger has maintained his reputation as a horror icon, considering the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise ultimately turned him into a bit of a joke. In the first installment, the dream demon was a genuinely haunting figure. In the sequels, Freddy devolved into a wisecracking pantomime villain. Nevertheless, fans felt obligated to watch the last chapter in the series, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, just to see how the killer popped his clogs. Because Freddy has survived being burned, buried, and having his very essence ripped to shreds, you'd assume he would have an extremely creative death. Well, nope. In the climax, Freddy's daughter Maggie brings her father into the real world where he's vulnerable, which is what Nancy did in the original. Maggie then stabs Freddy with his own glove, which is what Nancy did in the third film. Maggie then finishes Freddy off once and for all with the pipe bomb. After he blows up in a laughable CGI sequence, Freddy Krueger is no more. So not only did the final nightmare copy the ending from two previous installments, it killed off Freddy in the most unoriginal way possible. Nice one. Number three, various characters, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one and two. The Harry Potter franchise has some of the most tragic deaths in modern movie history. It's hard to find anyone who didn't blubber like a baby after watching Dumbledore, Dobby, or Snape shuffle off their mortal coils. However, there are certain characters that didn't bow out with the same level of grace. To be fair, this isn't exactly the filmmaker's fault. Because there are a legion of wizards dueling to the death in the last two installments, there's just not enough time to watch how every single person dies. Having said that, it's still disappointing to see such beloved characters exit the franchise so hastily. In the opening of The Deathly Hallows Part 1, it's casually mentioned that Mad-Eye Moody just died. Not only do we not see this happen, Moody is barely mentioned ever again. In The Deathly Hallows Part 2, Harry, Ron, and Hermione enter a rubble-filled room in Hogwarts where the students and teachers tend to the wounded. As Harry gazes around, he sees Fred Weasley, Nymphadora Tonks, and Remus Lupin have died from their injuries. However, the camera focuses on the deceased so briefly, we barely have time to register what actually happened. Even though Ron just lost his brother, we don't get a single clear shot of Fred during this scene. The shot of Nymphadora and Remus is so quick, some casual viewers didn't even recognize who they were. For shame. Number 2. Blow Feld for your eyes only. Every great hero needs a nemesis. Batman has the Joker, Sherlock Holmes has Moriarty, and even though James Bond has faced many colorful evildoers, there's no question Ernst Stavro Blofeld is his arch enemy. Being in charge of the world's largest terrorist organization, no one on Earth holds more destructive power than Blofeld. Since he's a master manipulator, the Spectre Commander is among the few who's gotten the drop on 007 on multiple occasions. And although Bond baddies usually have a deeply satisfying death, Blofeld is not one of them. In Fiori, 
realize only the legendary villain dies by falling down a chimney. If that sounds ridiculous out of context, you'll be even more infuriated when you learn the backstory behind this scene. With producer Kevin McClory owning the rights to Blofeld and Spectre, Eon Pictures decided to kill him off in the dumbest way possible as basically an F you to show McClory that they didn't need the character. If nothing else, they certainly made quite the statement. Number 1. Captain Kirk Star Trek Generations because Star Trek Generations was the first and only time Trekkies saw Captains James Kirk and Jean-Luc Picard interact with one another, it should have been a dream come true. But that's not all. To maximize the emotional impact, the writers thought it would be sensible for Kirk to die in the climax. Because of Kirk's legacy, they knew they had to be very delicate with how William Shatner's character met his end. So did Kirk go out in a blaze of glory? Did he sacrifice himself for his crew? Did he have one last showdown with the Klingons? Not at all. Instead, he died by tumbling off a bridge like Wile E. Coyote. If you haven't seen the movie in a while, you might think Kirk's death isn't as bad as you remember. In reality, it's worse, to be honest. You see, the last thing Kirk says before drawing his last breath is, Oh my. Which happens to be the catchphrase of George Takei, who portrayed Sulu in the original Star Trek run. Because Takei's Oh my has become a universally known meme in recent years, it's impossible not to think about it while watching this already anticlimactic scene. Still funny though. And that's our list. Know any other iconic movie characters who suffered insulting deaths? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. I've been Gareth from WhatCulture.com. Cheers for stopping on by. Hopefully you will again. Now go and be the best damn you. Bye-bye.